our case study infective endocarditis what do we have we have a 63 year old male presenting to the ER with a two-day history of high-grade fever with chills high-grade fever with chills he does not feel well and he thinks it might be the flu he has some painful bumps on his fingers and toes the patient had an infected tooth removed about two weeks ago and he does not recall receiving any antibiotics either prior to or after the procedure. Past medical history shows rheumatic fever as a child with mitral valve replacement two years ago, diabetes type 2, alcoholic liver disease. Vital signs, the most prominent vital sign findings, tachycardia, pulse rate 118, temperature 102.5. By physical examination, you could detect diastolic murmur along the left sternal border, suggestive of aortic regurgitation. Transthoracic echo showed a 3 cm vegetation on the aortic valve was observed. This vegetation is nothing but infection, bacteria, reaction, vegetation on the aortic valve. Blood cultures, positive. Three of three sets were positive for Streptococcus viridans. So now we have what? Positive blood culture and a positive echo. Positive blood culture and a positive echo. The two major criteria are there. The, your diagnosis is going to be infective endocarditis for sure. So which type of infective endocarditis is suggested by the patient's clinical manifestations? Is it acute or subacute? Considering the patient's high-grade fever and chills suggest that this disorder is acute. Which illnesses in the patient's medical history may be contributing to the onset of infective endocarditis? The most important thing is the rheumatic fever. The rheumatic fever as a child, this patient does not have a normal valve and he had his mitral valve replaced. He has his, he has his mitral valve replaced. Both also diabetes mellitus and alcoholic liver disease are risk factors. They, these patients are more vulnerable to developing infections and bacteremia. What is the significance of the absence of track marks on the patient's skin? In examination, you did not notice any track marks on the patient's skin. And this has a significance because it tells you that this patient is not an intravenous drug abuser, is not an intravenous drug user, So, which is a relatively common cause of infective endocarditis. The risk factor for infective endocarditis, one of the risk factors is intravenous drug use. You couldn't detect the track marks here. Good. What is the most significant and relevant clinical finding in the physical examination in this patient? It's going to always be murmur. It's always going to be murmur. So don't forget, a very important physical finding in infective endocarditis, murmur, murmur and a fever, fever and a murmur. It's all about murmur and a fever, fever and a murmur. And the most important investigation is going to be blood culture and echo. So infective endocarditis, physical examination, fever and a murmur. Tests, blood culture and echo. Aortic regurgitation occurs when the aortic valve does not close completely during the diastole phase of the cardiac cycle. Vegetations growing and the margins of the heart valve can interfere with the closure of the valve and this results in the aortic regurgitation. And when you have an, a valve defect, you're going to have a murmur. You're going to have a murmur. Identify five elevated lab test results that are consistent with the diagnosis of infective bacterial endocarditis. What do we have here? We have elevated serum glucose concentration. What's that? Stress. Stress due to the infection will make it hard to control your blood glucose level. And don't forget this patient is type 2 diabetes, so it's going to be harder for him to control his blood sugar with this stress of infection. White blood cell count is elevated. Neutrophils are elevated. Band cells, immature white blood cells are elevated. ESR, elevated. All these elevated lab tests are consistent with the diagnosis of bacterial endocarditis. What is the appropriate pharmacologic treatment for this patient? It is going to be what? The patient is, gives an, a penicillin allergy history a penicillin allergy history. So, and it was kind of life-threatening systemic anaphylactic shock. And because of this, uh, and because the etiology has been identified as strep viridans by the blood culture, the appropriate antibiotic therapy is going to be vancomycin. It's going to be vancomycin. Let me say one word about penicillin allergy. If the patient has a history of penicillin allergy, 
can you give cephalosporin? And the answer is absolutely yes, you can give cephalosporin provided that the allergy was no more than skin rash. If you develop skin rash due to penicillin, you can very safely use cephalosporin. But if it was more than skin rash, if it was kind of life-threatening anaphylactic shock, you should stay away from the beta-lactam antibiotics, stay away from any beta-lactam antibiotics, stay away from cephalosporins, and use vancomycin. So the appropriate therapy for this patient is going to be vancomycin.